Hi, it's Sarah and it is time for our late August garden tour. So I'm gonna take you around my Virginia Zone 7 garden and show you everything that we have going on right now. Um, things are really popping. There's a lot of stuff I really need to pick actually after I film this video. So you're gonna get to see a lot of plants that are like doing their thing with lots of produce hanging out on, on the plants and it's very exciting. So let's get started and go around and see how everything's doing. So let's start out with a more disappointing area and then we can get into the exciting stuff. So this is this bed here that I have a few cucumbers in. They've been struggling the whole time. If you've been following along, you know the drama that has been the soil that I put in these beds and it's not super great. There's a lot of chunks of wood in there and it's just tying up on the nitrogen, I think is the main issue. Uh, but you know, they're trying to grow. It's just, not a lot is happening. There is a little cucumber there. So I'm just kind of at the point where like, I'm not stressing about it. I'm just gonna let them do their thing. And if we get some fruits, great. But this is more like a long-term project for the future to get these, you know, in a, these, this bed in a better situation for next year. Um, but let's get past that and talk about things that are really happy. Look at this zucchini plant. It's huge, giant, and it has totally come out of the bed. So. You can see the stem starts over there. This is the Costata Romanesco zucchini, and I'll have all of the produce items with their names and everything listed in the video description so you can see all that. Let's get in here. So it's got this striping, like ridging type thing, and they're like really creamy and delicious. I'm definitely gonna grow this again, and the squash bugs have not really been an issue with these. Um, and they're just producing and producing more than I can eat as is usually the case with zucchini. And then right above it here, this is a trellis of uh, cucumelings or Mexican sour gherkins. There are these little, kind of like little baby watermelon looking things. The wind is really blowing through here. Let's see if we can find, yeah, like, well, the leaves are all in the way. Maybe if I go around, we can find one that you can see a little bit better. Here we go. The vines kind of all grew to one side. So maybe here's one. So see that? They kind of look like a little baby watermelon, but they're a cucumber. They have a little bit of a sour flavor. I love growing these. Um, I'll put in a picture of a bunch of them together. They look really, uh, I don't know, kind of like whimsical and fun. They're tasty. And I think this is especially good if you like like kind of snacking in the garden as you're going along. Kind of like how one of the best part of growing cherry tomatoes is that you get to kind of snack on them when you go along the garden. This is like the cucumber version of that. Sorry, the sun is very bright, so it is in my eyes. Um, but it's like the cucumber version of that. So you can just grab them when you are in the garden or just kind of walking around in the evenings or whatever. And of course you can harvest larger amounts too when they're all ready to go. Um, but they're really fun because they are very snackable. And I think they're really great too if you have kids. Um, gardening with kids is a great idea no matter what, but things like this that are really easy for them to pick um, that they can enjoy right away, I think are extra special. And everyone, like whenever they see these, they're like, what are those? Those look so cool. And they're really easy to grow. So lots of fun things about the cucumelons. I just love them and you know, their seeds are pretty easy to find. But moving along from the cucumelon trellis, um, we do have one Jimmy Nardello pepper here. I picked a ton of these the other day. A bunch of them were ripe all at the same time. They're a sweet pepper, um, and there's you know some smaller ones coming on there. But these are great. Love growing these. I've been growing these for a few years now. We've got another squash over here, which has tumbled through the path and down and around and. Let's see, oh yeah, this has a big tangle of a bunch of fruits that are all coming on at the same time in there. So we're about to have a lot of zucchini, which means some of my friends and family are about to have a lot of zucchini because I still have some in the fridge and I just cannot eat all of these. And then coming around from that zucchini, if we come to the side, this is the okra patch, which I feel like I need to back up a lot so you can see, there we go. They have gotten so tall. I mean, if I, like, I'm just gonna walk up next to them. This is like at my head level, and they go up higher than that. And I mean, just look at the flowers. This is my first year growing okra, so I'm just kind of amazed by it. The flowers, the flowers are stunning. The structure is amazing that they give, just, you know, 
kind of in a line straight up. And then we're getting a lot of okra, more than we can eat, honestly. And you can see that some of them have even been on the plant too long because I just can't go through them fast enough. Um, I'm gonna try pickling some, I think, because that's supposed to be good, but I'm just really, really happy with how these have done, especially for it being my first year growing them. And then moving along the other side here, you can see we've got lots of Thai basil in there. I've been loving that um, for using different recipes. Another one of those Jimmy Nardello peppers that I've gotten a lot of fruits off of. This is where the eggplant were. If you watched my last harvest video, then you saw that these were much bushier and I was getting some fruits off of them. But I think they got flea beetles is what it looks like. I've never had those before, so that was a first for me. But by the time I realized it was kind of too late. Um, so I've picked off what was left on there and now these plants just need to get pulled. But, you know, there's also new things to be excited about. While some things are dying, some things are living. This is a whole section of Korean radish that I have planted for the fall. So this is a large radish, kind of like a daikon radish. Um, and I seeded these pretty generously and then we got a ton of rain and like they all germinated. So this is really happy. Now I just need to come out here and thin these because they're big radishes, so they need a lot of space. Um, so I'm gonna come out and start thinning some of these. And you know, they've got, start, have started getting some leaves so we can maybe use the baby greens and something. But if these can just keep on going, hopefully we'll have a nice crop of radishes here, um, you know, in a couple months. And you know, normally it's not really advised to grow a bunch of new stuff all at once because it's a lot to keep track of, but it's gone really well for me this year. And I think that's because I do have a lot of gardening experience. I'm not a total newbie and I consume a lot of gardening information, um, even about plants I'm not growing just through YouTube and different things. Um, so even though I haven't grown some of these things before, I do have a little bit of base knowledge that way and just kind of my general gardening knowledge. Um, so it's gone pretty well for me. We've had a couple issues, but I mean, that can happen even with things you're familiar with. So I'm not really worried about it. And I'm kind of, you know, really excited about how things have gone. Like with the eggplant issue, like now I know that that's a thing. And we did get some eggplants and it wasn't like I was planning on, you know, feeding my family an eggplant this year. So it's not a big deal. Um, and, you know, they were pretty successful. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now this here is what I would call another problem bed. This has that poor soil in it, but with some fertilizer and stuff, it has done a little bit better. The beans down here have never really taken off. I haven't gotten a large amount. These are all bush beans that I'm growing down here. Um, two different varieties. These have done a lot better. These are, um, they're like a wax bean. And I thought they were bush beans, but now some of them you can see that have gotten close to the tomato cages have started growing up. So I'm like, are these not a bush bean? Are they like reverting to being a climbing bean? Not really sure about that. Um, maybe they were labeled wrong, I don't know. But they are growing, um, but it's really just confirmed for me that I really prefer a climbing bean to a bush bean. I don't know, I mean, the climbing beans, when I've grown them in the past, they're just so much easier to see when the beans are ready because they're just kind of arranged climbing. You don't have to crouch down on the ground. They're just kind of at your level. I mean, you have to get down a little bit for some of the lower ones, but it's totally different than the bush beans. This is actually my first year growing bush beans. Um, and they are nice if you need something that's that kind of growth habitat, like you need something that's gonna be low. Um, I couldn't plant them, you know, climbing ones in front of these tomatoes in the back because it would totally block out the light from them. So, you know, things like that that you need to take into consideration. Um, so it's not that they're bad or I would never grow them again if the situation called for it. But if I had a choice, personally, I would definitely go for a climbing bean over a bush bean based on this experience. I think they look nicer, honestly. That climbing kind of habitat looks really pretty to me. Um, but they're just a whole lot easier to pick and see what's ripe and all that kind of stuff. And then as far as the tomatoes here on the back, um, mixed results, not doing as well as tomatoes elsewhere because again, the soil is not great. But if we kind of swing around the side here, this is the only large tomato I'm growing and it finally has some fruits. This is called gold metal. It's like a yellow, red, um, you know, multicolor tomato. Let's get in there. There you go. So you can see we've got a couple there. Come down. There's one there. There's one coming on here. So hopefully they have enough time to ripen. That's really gonna be what we have to see. But even if they don't, you know, it won't be ideal, but 
we can at least use them in some way. And this second one here, you know, right next to it, this is the same type, but I have not seen any fruits. I mean, it has finally started growing, but no real tomatoes. This one just might be too far behind to really do anything, but you know, we'll just leave it and see what happens. And then a couple other tomatoes here, like I said, they're kind of growing, not doing great. This is a green zebra here. Um, they're just a little struggling, and I mean, that's just kind of the nature of what's happening in this bed this year. But you know what's not struggling this year are all of the cherry tomatoes I'm growing in the ground, in containers, um, with a few exceptions that are just in bad spots. Almost everything is kind of just going wild. Uh, so let's go look at those, because it's really exciting. So we'll start out with these three. These are the driveway containers and um, they're these galvanized bins. First time using these this year, highly, highly, highly recommend. I am really enjoying growing um, all kinds of food in these. They've been great and they're um, really affordable for the size compared to other types of containers that you might get. But let's talk about the food because that's what we're here for. Um, these are beans yellow pear. You can see totally covered. The vines have like come out of the top they're uh, trailing down. It's that time of year where things are just kind of, there's no controlling it, trying to keep it tidy. It's just gone full on wild. And I'm okay with that. Uh, these I think are really cute. The shape, the color, not my favorite in terms of flavor. Not sure I would grow them again. Um, I'm thinking about doing a kind of roundup of the tomatoes I've grown this year. If that would be interesting to you, let me know. Um, just kind of review them and talk about which ones I'd grow again, which ones I wouldn't. But I feel like for someone who doesn't love a strong tomato flavor, these would be great. They're just for me who loves a very tomatoey, like very sweet, very acidic, you know, those kind of strong flavored tomatoes, no matter what they might be, um, you know, whichever direction they might lean. These are not them. Very, very mild. So for someone, it might be the perfect tomato. For me, I just don't know that I want to give this a spot in my garden when I don't super, super love it. Like I said, color is fun, shape is fun. But when it comes down to flavor, which is the main thing, right? They're just not my personal favorite. That may be good for someone else. Coming down the line, we've got the blush tomato here. Kind of come around and you can see lots of ripe fruits in there. I love this tomato. Um, good flavor, not my absolute favorite in terms of flavor, but I do enjoy it. Uh, but the thing I really like is this, you know, red and yellow blush kind of combination. And then the shape, you know, having something that's a little bit different shape. It looks really attractive um, when you're cooking with it. Uh, it's a little bit of a larger cherry tomato type. So love these. These are one of my faves. And then the third one here in our trio the green zebra, looking happy. I've gotten a few of these. This is the first year growing these, um, and this one has been much more successful than the one in that one bed, but they are a green one ripe tomato. You can see this one is unripe, but this one down here that's starting to turn a more like, I don't know, bright green, that's almost ready. And they look so pretty when you slice them, just, you know, mixing up that color on the plate. So. I'm really liking these a lot. And then we can kind of make a loop here coming back to closer to the house. So lots of containers here. Those are, these are those Korean dark green peppers. A lot of them have turned red now, as you can see. I'm really liking these. The plants are absolutely covered. I've been cooking with them a lot. They're great. Very, very happy with these. Um, you can see there's one that's dark green, but I just haven't been able to keep up with them. And like, th if they turn red, that's fine. Uh, but I think now, at this point, I'm probably going to start making some hot sauce with these, like a fermented hot sauce, um, because we need to process some of these. And I just don't have enough friends that like hot peppers um, as much as I do to be able to distribute them to other people. And you know, I think that's one of the great things about gardening, honestly, is that even in this little container, I can have so much that I don't even know what to do with it. Um, and then we need to start thinking about how we're gonna preserve it and having it on for later uh, or giving it to other people. And that's one of the things that I really love about it is because, you know, even with just a few plants, you can really get a lot, especially with varieties like this one that produce a lot 
per plant. So maybe something to think about. Um, you know, I know we're kind of in the middle of garden season right now, but if you're thinking about for future years, for next year, uh, what type of varieties you wanna grow, if you want something that's gonna produce a lot of hot peppers, definitely recommend this Korean dark green variety because I've only got four plants in this thing and they're just, they're, they're just going for it um, and they're great. So I recommend it. So moving on from my hot pepper discussion, let's talk about these containers here. So I've got a little herb quad here. Um, these are just looking great. We've got thyme, we've got za'atar, we've got rosemary, and we've got oregano and they're looking great. I've been using them and cooking and um, they're wonderful. Now these type of Mediterranean herbs in my zone can just kind of barely hang on through the winter if they're planted in the ground, but in containers, they cannot make it. So this will be kind of a future project for me. I'm gonna have to bring these in for the winter and see if we can get them to make it through. Don't really know anything about that because I've never grown any herbs like this in containers that you have to bring in in the winter because I've really been expanding my container game uh, this year. So that will be kind of a new project for me, but we'll get there when we get there. And then the Calamond and Orange back here, this is another one that's gonna have to come in for the winter. Most of its fruit are gone. The only one I see, see if I can even get down in there where you can see it. See that one right there? That's the only one I see hanging on to the plant. It set a lot in the spring and then they all kind of fell off, but it was very small. So I don't think it could have, I don't know much about it, but maybe just couldn't support those, whatever. But it's putting on so much new growth. Like when I first got this, it was a little tiny baby thing. And I mean, not tiny, but much smaller than it is now. And it is just consistently, I mean, you can see right there, fresh growth coming on. So this has definitely put on some size um, and it's making me excited to try to get some more citrus next spring because I've really enjoyed this, but you know, we'll see if I can keep it alive through the winter inside because growing stuff in the house, house plants, not really um, as much of my skill set. So we'll see. And then looking up, or actually let's stay down here. We've got lots of basil coming in here, looking great. I just kind of interplant that everywhere. And then moving up more tomatoes. Let me kind of step back. This is like a little tomato jungle here, and I love it. Uh, we've got sun golds, which are my absolute favorite. These little orange friends, just loaded. Look at all of those fruit that still need to ripen. I came out here and picked a bunch the other day. So this is like, I mean, let's come around. This one has stretched over the top of this other tomato. <laughs> and like come down and it's falling down this side. So if you're gonna grow one tomato, it is a hybrid, so you can't save seeds from it. It's the only hybrid I grow, but it's so tasty and so productive. So I just always include it. Um, we've got Japanese trifle black in here, kind of like a medium sized fruit. See them kind of in there. They're finally starting to ripen up. I've been eating some of those. It's not my absolute favorite in terms of flavor, but it is nice because it's not a cherry. You know, you can see it's much bigger than these, but it's also not, a large tomato, to me it, it kind of hits the best of both worlds. Because you know, one thing I love about cherry tomatoes is they're just so productive, you're getting so many fruits, you're kind of always snacking on them and they're really great. But if you need something a little bit larger to put in a cooked dish or even just for slicing on a sandwich, you can't really do that with cherry tomatoes. I mean, you can put a few in there, but it, it kind of isn't the exact right thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but with large tomatoes, they don't produce as many fruits and it feels just a little bit more not as exciting to me, they take longer to ripen. And you know, if you lose one, it's kind of like, well, that was a significant portion of the fruit that this plant's gonna produce compared to like with the cherry tomatoes. But this kind of medium size, similar to the green zebra actually, you kind of get a little bit of mix of the benefits of both. It's big enough that you can slice it and use it for things, but it's also gonna produce more fruit than a really large tomato would, at least in my experience. So it kind of, kind of hits in the middle there, which is really nice. And then continuing down the lane here, we have a black cherry here. Another one of my favorites, this particular plant has not been super productive this year, which is not typical for this plant, but I don't know, but they taste really good. And I love them, they're kind of this like brick colored tomato, really, really great flavor. Um, probably like that and the sun gold are my two favorite cherry tomatoes to grow. And then this here, the eye candy cherry, um, I don't think I'm gonna grow this again. I don't know. It's got all this green growth, not a lot of fruit. The fruits I've gotten 
not that tasty. I mean, it looks pretty. You can see it kind of has, similar to the blush, kind of this yellow, red, swirly kind of thing. Uh, but just doesn't really taste like much of anything. And it's not putting on too many fruit. And the name is such that I can't even say it in a video because now it sounds like something else that it wasn't when this tomato got named. Uh, so just, I don't know. I think this one is going to go on the chopping block. I just, not worth it to me. This here is another thing I'm really happy with. This purple basil I planted it is just like exploded. This is exactly what I wanted. Like this just like little tuft of basil coming up. Uh, the nasturtiums, they are doing okay. Um, but let me kind of see if I can maybe pull back there. You can kind of see all the containers. The nasturtiums just look a little sad, honestly. They haven't done too great. The hummingbirds are interested but they haven't been as productive as I would have hoped in these hanging baskets, so that's a little want want, but it's okay. Uh, this is the Phileas Blue, love these. Uh, they're kind of all red now with a few more purple ones coming on. We kind of hit that peak time where they were all in different stages of ripeness, so you had some of the like purple blue, you had red, you had orange, you had yellow, and it was so, so beautiful. I mean, love this. It's small, compact pepper plant, very ornamental very happy with it uh, but now they're kind of all turning red and I need to just harvest these and probably make some hot sauce with these or maybe pickle these um, I wonder if they would pickle well whole that might be something for us to try and I'll just kind of keep swinging along the line here this is the lemongrass you can see she thick I mean if we get down in here low they're getting very tall and the stems are actually starting to like you know, get to the size where you might actually want to cook with them, especially down in the middle. I haven't harvested any of these yet, and I think you can harvest like throughout the year, but I've just kind of, I've never grown this before, so I'm just kind of watching. Uh, maybe I should start picking some, but we're definitely going to have to harvest some here soon, if, if not just at the end of the season harvesting it all. I mean, I might try to pull one out of there. If you have any experience growing lemongrass, let me know how you harvest it. Because the issue that I've had is I've tried to look up videos on like harvesting lemongrass, but basically everything I find is someone at the end of the growing season, like let's cut out all this lemongrass and here's how I freeze it and all this stuff, which is fine, great. Uh, but what about during the growing season? I've seen one video and it was just kind of like, just cut it out. I'm like, okay, I'm new at this. Like, I'm sure you've had this experience before. The, when you're new to a plant and you're like, I mean, I guess that's okay, but like I would really prefer step by step, very detailed instructions because I have no experience with this and I don't want to mess that up. Um, so if you've grown lemongrass, let me know. How are you harvesting it? I saw one woman who was harvesting the leaves. She wanted to use the leaves, which I know you can eat them, but that was like her prime reason for growing it. And that was interesting. But again, not exactly what I'm trying to do. So if you know, let me know. But continuing along the porch, we've got another Phileas Blue here in a pot. Very cute. This is a uh, lime basil, which is finally looking like something. I've been pinching flowers. I haven't actually used any of this yet, um, which is a little embarrassing. Uh, but it smells really amazing. It was really hard to germinate, but the few ones that did come up and stick around, they are looking pretty nice now. And like I said, they smell amazing. Just need to actually cook with them. This, the Genip, is looking kind of droopy but um, I guess I just need to water it. Like, what are you doing? You're usually like so happy and perky looking, but you can see there's a lot. I mean, it's coming up to the bottom of this hanging basket. There's a lot going on here. It looks so beautiful. I've been cutting it. Um, I harvested some of this in that harvest video and cut it back and it just put pushed on new growth. So the perilla is very happy in this container and I'm very happy about it. It smells really nice um, and you know, it's great for when I need it. And I've been able to share it with some people, which has been really nice too. Um, so I can share some of my bounty. And then here, this is like, I know I say everything is my favorite thing, but this is one of my favorite things happening in the garden. This container of fish peppers with the one Hungarian black there. Hungarian black, still undecided on that one. It was one of the first, it was the first pepper to fruit. So that's great putting on a decent amount but not a huge amount but these fish peppers I mean look at them you have these two in the back that kind of grew way taller not as variegated you have this one in the bottom who 
is growing in a much more compact habitat, way more variegation. But I mean, if we just get in here and look at some of these peppers, now that they're starting to ripen, just look at the colors. It's so beautiful. The foliage is beautiful. The peppers are beautiful. They taste great. They're a nice size. You know, they're smaller than like a jalapeno size, but not super, super tiny or skinny like the uh, like the Korean dark greens down there actually in the other container. I think I'm gonna need to make some hot sauce with this too. And what I love about the fish pepper is not only is it beautiful, but it's a historic variety. It has a rich history. It was almost lost to time. I always, you know, encourage you guys to look at the history of the fish pepper. I'll put some links in the description. So many reasons to love this plant. So I'm very, very happy. Um, and I just wanna come out here and look at it all the time. Jason's very happy about it. Uh, uh, often we are talking about how beautiful these fish pepper plants look out here and how amazing they are. And you know, let's just pull back a little bit because I want to show you one of my favorite views right now is if we come stand back here, this is a random container, pay no attention to her. But like if you look down here and just kind of look at this whole area, it just makes me so happy. Just seeing all these, you know, tomatoes tumbling down and these containers down here. And you can kind of see the basil down there poking out. And then, you know, the fish peppers and the prilla. And uh, it's just the joy of that peak season time where everything is just giant and growing and it looks so bountiful. It just makes me so happy. So this is just one of my favorite areas. But now let's move on to one of the kind of problem areas this year, which is the raised beds at the end of the driveway. Now first, let me just say this is not as much of a problem area as it used to be, so let's celebrate that. These zinnias are doing a thing. Look, we're getting some little flower buds down in there, so hopefully we'll see some flowers from them soon. These peppers are doing a thing. You can start to see some peppers, though we did have an attack from tomato hornworms, which I know about but have never personally dealt with. There were a couple that were just chowing down on these plants and they were like little sticks, no leaves, but they have recovered. But you know, it's just been one thing after another for these plants. So we'll see, you know, this guy is trying to put on some peppers, but it's just getting later and later in the season. It's like, do you have time? I'm guessing no, but we're just gonna let them keep going and hope for the best. A um, few sunflowers are planted down here. They're kind of trying to do something. These beds are just a problem area. The cucumbers, we've gotten two, I think. There are fruits on the vines, but like, what is this? And it's one of those things like, I could deal with it, I could stress about it, like all this stuff happening, but I'm just not. I'm just not, we got so many things that are doing great. Some things aren't gonna do great. It's okay. And it's, they're kind of growing all over and it's hard to cut the grass around here. It's just, it's a thing, but it's fine. Same sort of deal. These peppers didn't get the tomato hornworm attack, so I feel like that has helped them a bit. Like this one's got quite a few. This is a sugar rush peach. Brazilian starfish trying to do something. So that's okay. These tomatoes are probably the real success of this bed. Like, let me see if I can kind of point up high enough that you can see. They've come out of their cages. They're growing to the sky. They're fruiting. They're doing the best of everything out here. Um, we've got a purple bumblebee and another one of those pear tomatoes, which is a little disappointment since I talked about how much I don't enjoy those. But it's okay, they're, they're still fine. And look at the purple bumblebee. He's so happy, so cute. So, you know, even in the areas where things aren't doing great, there, there are still things happening. And then this here, another thing to celebrate. This is the queen lime red zinnia. I planted this little cluster here. They're so pretty. I just love, you know, they come on this kind of pale color and as they age, they get a little darker. It's just a really pretty shade. And it's really nice to see, you know, this little burst of color here. So now let's move on to the back deck containers. Oh, actually, before the back deck containers, this is the kitchen garden, the low light struggle area, the lettuce. I've just been letting it go to seed, honestly. I just have not been paying attention to this area. I could try to plant something here for a late season crop. Maybe I will, but you know, we don't always get to everything. The sorrel back here though, is happy like you can see the french sorrel it's growing it's getting nice and established 
We've got the red vein sorrel that's coming on, um, you know, and even some little ones down here that are trying to grow. So this area I'm excited about because this is perennial. The whole goal this year is to get this established. So the next year it comes back and then the next year it comes back. And this can just be a greens bed that I don't even really have to deal with. We can just enjoy it. So this is the bright spot. Oh, hello little wizard. Oh, he ran away. Did you see him? Also in this area, we have the birdhouse gourd, one there that's doing okay, and the cherry tomatoes, which are not growing. They've got a few fruits, like I think you can see on that sun gold there, and if we look through, there's a few hanging on the back there, but largely not doing anything. And this was a test to see what was possible. Now we know that it is not possible to grow a tomato in this bed, just not enough light, so we won't do that again. And you know, lesson learned. But now let's go look at the back deck containers for real this time. So these three containers here are doing, doing well. This is uh, two black Hungarian peppers down in this pot. And they are fruiting and doing their thing. We got a purple bumblebee tomato. This container seems to, I don't know, this shape, or I don't know if it's this plant. This one gets wilty a lot more. It's kind of this tall shape. Um, I noticed that like when I haven't watered or hasn't rained, this one will get wilty um, very quickly. So that's kind of interesting, but don't have enough information, like I said, to know if it's a plant, if it's a container, what it is. And then we've got another sun gold over here, and that's in one of the galvanized bins. And this one actually kind of got up too tall where I couldn't even harvest some of them, but then it kind of tumbled down and they're coming back down again. So I can reach those just fine. And then probably my other favorite area, which is the little herb patch. Ooh, you basil fell over. Get back up in there with your friends. You just tuck in there. All right, that's at least gonna hold temporarily. We've got a mint here, which kind of got leggy and spread out and had some dead you know, leaves, but now it's throwing up shoots again from the center. We've got our chocolate mint, all of the basil. We've got our purple basil and our Genovese basil, and then more Thai basil back there. There we go. And I love doing, oh, this one fell down too. I love doing this little herb container on the deck because it's really easy to get to when I'm cooking. I think it looks really pretty having this like little trio. Just so many things about it visually, but also just the practicality, the functionality of it is great. So I, that, I mean, I'll do this every year. It's, it's so, so good. This was dill, but then the black swallowtail caterpillars came and they just had a feast and now they're gone. So hopefully we'll see some butterflies soon. Uh, but I just let them go for it. because I was like, it's fine. They're happy. And this is one of the benefits of having the garden is that it can be food for us, but it can also support the wildlife. So I kind of made that choice to sacrifice this to them. Um, and they, oh, they were so cute. I just loved coming out here and seeing their little fat butts wiggling around. Same thing, they kind of went onto the parsley. They, from my reading, like plants in that family. The parsley, carrots, dill, fennel, that kind of, um, those plants that are all related. So they were just like, so happy. Now the dill, you know, doesn't really come back like that, but the parsley, even when it gets eaten all the way down, sprouts back up from the crown. And then we've got some uh, perilla in here, some volunteer starts that were just kind of trapped under the canopy of the parsley but once the caterpillars ate it it's kind of had a chance to poke its head up so we might have kind of a second batch of perilla out here or maybe I'll pull it not really sure and then the lemon thyme I've been loving the lemon thyme it's so so flavorful great with roasted potatoes you know if I said it once I've said it a hundred times grow herbs if there's one thing if you're getting started if you're not sure what to do herbs are the way to go they're one of the easier things to grow and they're so rewarding. They look beautiful, they smell great, and they add wonderful flavor to your food. Like, just grow the herbs. You don't need a ton of space. And it's, you know, it's such a huge benefit, in my opinion. So that's what's happening out here in my garden. Overall, things are doing really well. I think this has been a very successful garden year. Um, in some ways, maybe one of my most successful. I think this, I have such a variety of plants growing. Um, it's certainly not the most I've ever grown in terms of total number of plants, 
but I really like that I've tried so many new things this year and have had some good success with them. And just visually, I'm really happy. I think I'm really getting that kind of edible landscaping type idea going on, which has been a big goal for me at this place. You know, if you've been around for a while, you know, at the old place, we had kind of a very dedicated garden space, which is still fun and I might add here somewhere eventually, but I've really wanted to try to incorporate more plants just kind of in and around us. Um, and that's something I've been able to do successfully this year. So it's been a learning experience for me. Um, and it's fun to like even things that you feel pretty comfortable with and know how to do to kind of switch it up and try a different iteration on that thing, like with the containers or putting things in the flower beds and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm just really happy about it. But let me know how things are going in your garden. I would love to hear how things are growing or if you're having any struggles, anything like that. Um, I hope that you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.